Welcome to uh, the presentation on, I guess, the stream on doing PCIe with Xilinx FPGA. So we're going to do kind of a quick introduction to how these devices work. This is going to be very quick, not in detail, very shallow. If you want to learn more about these devices in detail, go read a plethora of documentation. It's painful. Go, go have fun learning that. But today we're going to show, I guess, a quick, dirty look into how we can um, use PCIe with uh, two different devices on two different uh, platforms, right? So let's talk about what, we're, what setups we got today. So today we got two setups. We got um, a Vertex Ultra, so the device on the, on the left is a Vertex Ultra Scale Plus. Um, it has four DDR slots and it fits in to your motherboard. Um, let me show you. So we have my graphics card right there, and then below my graphics card we have the we have the BCU fifteen twenty five. Um. So we can. Uh, you see the screen upside down, and then we can just go flip flip. Cool. We have the BCU 1525. And let's. That box is not emptying. Uh, it should disappear at some point. Let me. Okay. Back to checkbox settings. Um, and feel free to chat during the recording. I don't really care. Just be able to see. So we have that device, and it's running on my machine that's streaming right now. So this is running Windows. This is, um, and we can see how to get, be able to read and write to our to the DDR over PCIe on Windows. Uh, our other device is a um, Acorn Squirrel. Let me show you kind of that for. This is how big the device is. Um, relatively small. I have 20 of these up on the, the farm over there. Really got to figure out the camera set up correctly. And we'll flip that over again. And there's our farm of all the acorn squirrels. And all my other stuff. And that's going to be running on... Oh, you can't see it because the window... <laughs> Let's see, we can move this window right over here real quick. Yes, my case is open right now, um, so I can demonstrate this and show you what's going on. We'll be running um, the Acorn uh, 215. Oh, is that? Oh, that, that one's a 215. I have a bunch of 215 pluses. Okay. But, and let's talk about more about these devices. So let's go to this screen, right? I want to go to the other, this one right here. So these devices were designed for uh, Bitcoin mining. And the first one is this one. You can get it on eBay. I got it for $1,000, but it ranges in price. Mine has 16. This has 64 gigs. I could upgrade it to have 64 gigs. The other device is it is also a Bitcoin mining device. Um, the 215 one has, is the best speed grade FPGA as the RTX 200T speed grade three, which is the best. And you can get it for ranging from 60 to $90, depending upon when it goes on eBay. And this guy has uh, zip ties focusing on it. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the, the different designs in these. Um, so actually let's go through Xilinx solutions. So Xilinx has a few solutions for communicating over the PCIe bus. Um, so the first solution, the one I've been playing around with, um, it's, this is X app, um, 1286 and it has this little PCIe light harder right here. 
And basically what it does, is it takes this um, this stream axie right here that comes out of the PCIe, which is like packet information, sending packets over PCIe, and it decodes those packets in this little module that acts as a memory master for the interconnect. So then you can like directly address stuff off your PCIe, which is very useful. But later we'll talk about why this is a problem for me, because this is a very, very fun problem for me. And we can go about that. Um, Another thing is using an Axie DMA bus. Um, they have a driver, you send messages, it goes to this DMA and then converts it to a memory bus where you can read and write. This is a little bit more difficult because you have to uh, configure these, uh, you have to do kind of these packets across the device. It's not directly memory memory map to your, to your host machine, which it, which is very useful, but a little bit more complex if you want to write a driver. Which I'll have to learn. Uh, I'll have to learn. Um, here's another one that has the CDMA device, which apparently you can write and it does DMA for the PCIe. I haven't looked at this design in detail, but this is another option. I'll post these links on the YouTube video later. But this is this is just documentation for the XDMA IP core. This is XAP one one seven one. Um, so those are some options. So let's take a closer look. Um, so back to my PowerPoint, my thing. So we're gonna look at the BCU design. Um, so I have that over here. I'll look at that. So I can zoom. So my BCU design has four DM DDR. Uh, DDR connections, right? Four uh, sticks on it. And each of these is a DDR core. Um, then we have our PCI XDMA IP core, which is connected to our Smart Connect and allows us to access each of the uh, each of the DDRs. And we can go look how they're address mapped. So each of them is four gigs. Um, and this is their base addresses. And this uh, this is from a GitHub custom part data files. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick. Um, custom part data files DCU five. And look here. Here's the here's the uh, the, the GitHub. Um, I'll make sure to add this as well to the video so people can figure out how to do it. And he kind of explains how it works. And I'll show you how to use the driver in Windows to be able to look at this. Um, so that's the fun thing. Well, and, I'll, and we'll show how to interact with each device today, and it'll be it'll be really interesting. Um, so, and here's the Acorn. Let's look at the two Acorn designs. We'll look at the one, the default one, right here. So here is the default design, which is off the Night Fury and Light Fury Master repo master branch that repo and like the other design this has the xdma it has an axi light bus which i assume is uh, probably some direct addressing and that connects to gpio and the in the spy bus then it has this master axi which will connects to the ddr their make controller right here this ldl link and so this is a very simple design that allows you to program the flash um, Read the version and the model, looks like. Um, it has a clock that's going to the LD blinker. Let's see if he has anything interesting in here. Um, counter, slices, stuff like that to get things working. Okay, cool. So that's one way. And um, I won't have that running because I don't have the XDMA driver working in, uh, working in Linux right now. But that's for the Acorn device. I need I that window in case we have any questions. Um, okay, um, let's go look at the my design. My design's a little bit more complicated. I have a lot going on in my design to do my testing. What I've done is I have the, so if we go to PCIe device, we have a PCIe device, and um, I have the stream bus, 
that goes to this axi light converter, converts it to a bus, and that's on this switch with the uh, DDR. And there's a bunch of masters for the DDR in this design. But okay, so let's let's pop open this uh, PCIe and see what's happening here. Try to get it to fit the screen. So let's make sure you can see what we're looking at. Um, anything important here? These are it's a four lane device. Um, and nothing else really special in here. You can choose what type of device it is. But here's here's important stuff: the vendor ID, device ID. This is useful for uh, when you want to uh, find it on your PCI bus. You define what class code it is. This is what it will appear like on your PCI device. You can call it whatever you want. It's kind of fun. Um, so here we go. We have this one's currently set to 32, but the one I'm going to show you today is a gigabyte. We have a gigabyte of direct memory access. Um, and this just tells you how much address space it has and what it will send back and forth. And yeah, so that's kind of what we have for this one. Pretty basic. Let's go see what the uh, XDMA one looks like. Again, too big. Okay, so for this XDMA one, um, DMA, basic, four lanes, yeah, maximum speed. Same thing with the IDs, class codes, simple communications. Um, they have a PCI to master um, and one megabyte of addressable space. So we'll, we'll look at that in a second. I want to see what that looks like. Um, then we have miscellaneous. And then we have DMA, and we and that defines this master axi interface right here, being able to do DMA transactions, um, which is useful. The software on the host side is a little bit more complicated. But if we go here. Um, this only has 16 bits of address space. All right here. So 4G, 32 bits of address space, starting at four. I just want to see, because it goes over there. Axi bar, PCI to Axi light master size value, PCI to Axi translation. I feel like they need a, they, we, there needs to be a mask, right? I feel like he's lacking, lacking a mask for this uh, transaction. I don't know his, his how well his PCIe thing is. did download it. So maybe there's an issue of it yet. They tested it or it's going for it. So we might have to play with that later. Figure it out. So there we have our uh, our designs. So let us... Uh, Let's talk about Windows software, right? Windows software to read and write. Um, one thing I found really useful was the Jungo WinDriver software. Unfortunately, there's only a 30-day uh, license on that. And while it was useful and I got to, I got to get, learn some really cool stuff on it, it's not a good long-term solution. And so for a long-term solution with Windows is the XDMA driver. And we can also use read, write, everything program to kind of look at the configuration space on our PCI device for debugging. So um, let's talk about that. So the most important thing when using Windows is you need to disable your driver signature verification. So this basically allows you to install a driver that is not official and it allows you to develop your own drivers and whatnot. And uh, I mean, simple instructions is when you when you click reset, hold down shift, go to troubleshoot, go to advanced options, startup options, and then you want to disable driver signature enforcement. And you click seven when you start your computer, and you're good to go. I had to do that before this uh, before this stream, otherwise we wouldn't be able to interact with the device. So let's go look at it. Um, so first thing first, we're going to look at read write everything. Um, so this allows me to look at all my PCI devices. So we're going to look at the Xilinx device. Um, right here we have the device code and the device ID. So if we open up um, this guy again, right? And we double click here. We can see the PCI ID is 10EE. The device ID is 9011. And this matches up perfectly for here. 
and then we have the information about bar one, which is um, the bar is the address space we're using to send our packets across, and some other useful information. And I believe we can read device from here. I'm just not really sure about this information. Um, so we won't worry about that right now. But we can go there. So that, that, that we can use that to kind of debug our software. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to look at We want to look at the Axie DMA driver. So on Windows, you can just go ahead and install the driver. Pretty straightforward. And then we have this bin interface that allows us to, we have some binaries that we can use to test this driver. So let's go, hope, go ahead and open our device manager to see the device. And if we go down here, we have Xilinx drivers. We have Xilinx DMA and we can go um, properties. We can go to hardware IDs, and here we go. We have the vendor is 10EE, the device is 9011, and we can. I'm not sure there's anything else useful here at the moment. Well, you can read a lot of useful information there. Okay, now we can go ahead and. Um, Okay. Now let's run axdma Ax info in our binary file. And it found one device. It can tell us all fancy stuff about the device. Um, we have a host to client module. Um, tells us all the features that are enabled on the IP core using our driver software. Address bit is 64 bits. Um, Channel ID is zero. I think it only has one channel. So then we can do, they have a simple test. So, and it wrote 496 bytes to device and then it read it. So let's go ahead and do a quick, uh, uh, let's do a quick read, right? So there's the first four bytes. Now let's do a write. So we want to go host. Post to client. We want to write. I wonder how well this will work if I just say dead. One bit written. I go ahead and read. Oh, it must have wrote a byte at a time. So if we read 16. Oh, I think I know what to do. Gotta go. Right? Read. There we go. Dead beef. So we've written dead beef to our device and we read dead beef from our device. Yay. Okay, so let's look at what is actually on our memory bus, right? So we head back here. We had an address space right here. We had um, 16 gigs that we can write to on this device. And we can go ahead and Play around with those addresses. So, the so first here, let's do. Okay. Eight eight nine nine sure. A A zero one. Uh, and then let us put a one there. No, it's a two. The one. I think. Um. Yes, a one, two, and three. We'll write. I don't know. I wanted to write a two there. Three. <laughs> and then at one, we want to write a two. And then at. Three, let's write a four. And then let's go do some reading. So reading, that's the first one. That's the second DDR chip. That's the third DDR chip. And here's the fourth DDR chip. 
So we can read and write to all four DDR on the device on the FPGA. And then if we wanted to, we could throw in some um, hardware accelerator. So like if I wanted to use this device for machine learning or something like that, what I would do is either I would say when I write to it, it doesn't write directly to memory. It instead writes it to a neural network or something like that, and then, then it, saves its it saves that into the DDR. That way, all the processor does is just kind of writes it, and then it's processed, and then you read the results. So we could do, we could do some really cool um, hardware acceleration with this device on this Windows machine. And then we could just put like a Python ripe, wrapper around these things and stuff like that. Um, I think there's a speed test. Let's, let's look at the speed test. Um, uh, let's see, let me pull up. There's a read me anywhere. I think there's a read me at the top. Let's see, edit this. Um, Okay, yeah, so let's look at the simple DMA and the uh, streaming DMA. So, go ahead and see what simple DMA does. Um, starting card, we are true to be able to transfer eight megabytes in 347 seconds. Let's see if we want to do streaming DMA. They are not streaming engines, interesting. Um, is there any useful thing here? I was going to see if I can increase the size and we could try a larger, uh, Let's see, does this, um, does this show anything useful? We did four bytes in 31 seconds. Okay. Um, let's see, what is a good example? Um, they did eight megabytes. What's up? Uh, let's see. Let's open up our calculator, right? Um, let's try transactions and see how fast we can do this. Um, we do 1,024 bytes, kilobyte, megabyte. Um, and this is a gigabyte. Let's try 32 megabytes. Do 1,004 times 4 times 32. So that's going to be two zero 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 zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to read, do it from the first drive, and we're going to do a length of four zero zero, right? And two, one two three, and we want an output file. And instructions for output file is f path. So it's call it output dot text, right? Um, and we want to do dash verbose. So we read, um, we read that in nine or uh, ten milliseconds. Nine milliseconds. Yeah. So let us try to do a gig. Well, actually, let's go look at the file. Let's go look at the file before we go crazy. Um, binary, then, so we have an output.txt. Edit this. We can see crazy amount of information this provides. We want to create a gig file. That seems kind of stupid.
Wait a minute. Okay. Um. So let's try a 10x improvement. Did not like that size. But so if we can do kind of 32 bytes, let's see, 64 bytes. And it scales pretty well. But what we wanted was, oh, we're missing a zero here. Three point two four megabytes. Um, so they did. They did. Did. Right, so that's 80, eight megabytes. We did that 40 mil, 45 milliseconds. So we got some pretty good data rates able to work with this system. And we can make uh, giant text files. Look at the whole data. So yeah, that's useful. And so this is how I think I would go about testing this on a, on Windows, put a Python wrapper around this and see how it goes. Um, so that's the Vertex Ultra Scale with Windows. Now let's look at uh let's look at how we would do this with Linux, right? Um, so let's pull up my R Linux system, which is remote at the moment. We've got mobile Xterm working. So why do we want to do this? Okay. So, so the most important command is L I P C I, which tells you all your devices. So right now my, my acorn squirrel is right here. It's a memory controller Xilinx Corporation device 7024. Um, I can look at the tree and this is not too important at late right now, but here's a device on this connection. But once I have 20 of these devices, um, we can have a lot more of these and you'll see how that we can do branch it out. So if you want to look at for both, we do dash V and this says Xilinx device we the memory is allocated at eight zero 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 and it has a size of one gigabyte um and we can play around with it uh, if you do vv you get this and this is all the information and you can um, do a lot of fun stuff to this um oh i forgot to mention about reconfiguring your fpga so um going back to um, when if you reconfigure your FPGA while it's plugged in, you need to uh, need to remove the device. So in this situation, we would go remove device. We would then uh, issue a rescan of the PCIe, and we do PCIe or we do the LS PCIe again. We have it connected, um, and then we want to enable the device. So we'll go over here where we we'll enable instead, and then we can enable the device and we can be able to read and write to it. Um, so let's talk about where. Um, yeah, so that's how we can configure device, get up and running. Oh, to Windows. Windows, if you reprogram the device, Windows, we can just, uh, you have to uninstall the driver and reinstall the driver and scan for new hardware. And that's usually how you get it working. If you if you change the size of the memory bus, you usually have to do a hard reset because it's the motherboard that does the memory allocation before even the BIOS, BIOS um, uh, turns on the screen. 
So that's important. And we'll talk about while breaking your PCI can be really hard to debug. So um, I have an interface here, so let's pull that up. Um, let's go to PCIe, let's pull up open with, let's open that with Visual Studio Code. And we can look at this together and maybe have fun uh, figuring this out. Um, let's Um, let's control L. So, um, go here. So I have code that um, uses this uses this really simple uh, LSPCIE um, library to be able to read the device. And all we really do after that is we mmap the device, and we can seek and and write and read to it. So it's really basic. I can I can do this in Python, read write to PCIe very, very, very easily. So let's open up Python. Let's import uh, PY PCIe. Um, and then let's just get PY PCIe dot LS PCIe. We can just do a general read. We have all the devices, not very useful. So let's go device equals your X four, boom. So we have one device that matches this search and we got a bunch of good information from it. Um, I did update this, uh, I did add a little tweaks to this so I could do like the PCIe location so we could do the so we can do the hard reset and whatnot here. I added this feature to uh, the devices so we could be able to do uh, system commands to uh, re-enable the device. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this. All right, so we can just do dev, and we have the same thing. We can do dev dot um, bar, dev dot. Oh, I think I have to do dev zero dot bar. And this gives us our address and whatnot. And if we displayed that in hex, sure. Um, let's see if we do bar dot. We do zero, zero dot. Um, address. Look at that, and let me see. see how we can print hex in Python. Okay, so we can just do hex. Hex that. There we go. That's the address we expect, and we can also do size. It is really large. Okay. Next, we can memory map it. So let's go m equals. We'll have to import mmap, don't we? And OS. So import OS, import uh, mmap system. I don't think we need system. So let's go ahead and mmap this device. So we're just going to create an operating system file that is really just the entire memory <laughs> of your device. We're gonna do see that's read only, which I need to update in a few. Mission denied. This is where I messed up. <laughs> Let's go do this again, shall we? So we gotta exit. Then we gotta pseudo Python because we need permissions to be able to access this terribly hard thing. So let's go ahead and import. Import OS, not aux. Import uh, mem. Um, sorry. One mm, not mem. So yeah, let's go ahead and try to open that again. OS, I, I can just up it. Boom, there we go. Now we're going to, let's get that file, F. Um, and we want to do size, and let's go ahead and just do a very simple size, nothing too complicated. And we want to flags and map dot map shared so other programs can use it. We're going to read from it. What else do we want? We just want the address. The address is right there, one, two, three, four, boom. Oh, 
need offset. Offset. Okay, we have M. We can go ahead and seek the first address. Go M dot read. Four bytes, right? And we read four bytes. Um, so let's open up a window. So I want to be able to access this through hardware server. So let's go over here. And what we got, I have my Linux has a uh, JTAG device. So let's go ahead and open this up. And we have, I'm not sure that's going to work, but we can try. So we have a tickle console right here. And we're going to do XSDB. We're going to go connect dash URL TCP. It's FPGA farm. I don't think the name's going to work. It does. It's cool. Okay, cool. We're on JTAG targets. So we have our device here, targets. We have a microblaze on it. Let's let's go to target three. Boom. Um, let's do a, a memory read of zero eight zero 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 one two three four. Let's read four words. There we are. Our four words. And if we go back to our FPGA thing over here, no, no, wrong window. Right here. And we continue reading four bytes at a time. Um, so. Um, FF, so went zero 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 FF, FF, fifty five, fifty five, AA, 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 fifty five, fifty five, sixty six, sixty six, and ninety nine, ninety nine. And you can see where the, the characters were converted to uh, ASCII when we did that. And the cool and the thing when you do reading with MMAP, it automatically increments forward. And so if you want to go back and read that again, you're going to have to, we're going to have to do a seek and uh, goes back to the beginning and it does the read again. So let's have some fun. Um, let, us, uh, let us write a value here. We can just go you know, ahead and write the beloved dead beef. And we can go seek zero, read four, and now reads dead beef, uh, but with the byte Indianness uh, flipped around with a big Indian and not little Indian because the microblaze is little Indian. Okay. Any other questions before we move on to what issue I'm currently having, which you'll find very interesting? Um, got yeah, quite a few more people here. Um, if there's anyone else who has questions, if not, we'll move on to uh, my current issue. And we'll try to load in the device and maybe boot it up and see what happens. Okay, so let's talk about my current problem because my problems matter most. So we have one gig of addressable space, of direct addressable space. And if you look at any of these desi designs, it's, it's really small, like 256 bytes, 64K, 16K. Um, where's the GPU? Let's see how much, let's see how much address space the GPU. Oh, there's no GPU on this device. Um, I see the address space on the other device. This one has that memory allocated, memory behind bridge, yeah. Um, 256, 8K. That's that's the uh, that's the hard drive right there. You see how much little memory it has allocated? 4K, 64K, 128K. It seems all relatively small. And then you look at my my design, and it has one gig. So something probably not right. So what happens here is um, there is only the motherboard only has 32 bits of addressable space for the PCIe um, addressing, and even though I have a 64 64 bit processor, there is only 32 bits addressable space for my PCIe devices. Um, and I'm using and that's four gigs, so I only have a total of four gigs of addressable space for my PCIe devices. That means theoretically I should be able to put four of them and read them, but I have other devices on my PCIe chain. And um, when I plug them in, um, I'm not able to, uh, I, 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 I can't, I don't really have any much more space because I'm wasting it all on this stuff. I really wish we had 64 bit pro, uh, addressable space on the, on the uh, motherboard, but that I don't, that I don't think that's available. So what happens when I plug in multiple devices with this addressable space, my computer doesn't turn on. The, the motherboard 
Um, turns on, but the, the screen's black. The, it doesn't boot into BIOS. So this is kind of a pre-BIOS problem, which is really interesting. Something like, you know, your DDR dislodged or something like that, where um, you would have to have some debug message on the motherboard and whatnot. I haven't looked at it if there's any debug message or error message or anything like that. Maybe if there's a UART or something like that, I could look at debugging the motherboard. But I'm pretty sure what the issue is. So what we need to do is we need to make these more practical. We need to make this address space more practical. So what we're going to do is I have a design that has 32 megabytes, um, which is still pretty big compared to everything else, but we can go and see how that works. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to these, right? Let's go to the other one. So here's our design and we made it 32. So what we're going to do is going to open up the hardware manager where we're going to go to my, uh, my magical hardware server bridge. And we're going to program the flash. So we have a 256 um, megabyte flash here. We're going to uh, program the configuration memory. And we have some test scripts, but let's go up. I'm going to go to the M32. We're going to go to MCS. And we're going to do, um, do I want to? Uh, yeah, let's do that one. And we're going to erase program verify. Sounds good. Okay, so let's program it. So we're going to erase and program. It's going to take a bit of time, but we can um, um, talk through. So I think that's all my slides. I kind of, we we're talking about um, devices, different platforms, projects, different ways you can do this, different software on each of them to be able to understand what's going on. Um, but yeah. And we can post that information later. So once we're going to do this, um, we're going to reboot the device and see 32 megs. I don't really have time to program the flash on every single device we have to show you having multiple devices connected. I mean, if I had a little bit more prep time, I was kind of running slow on time. Um, but this will kind of show you, I guess, uh, working with PCIe in action, Windows, Linux, um, Xilinx 7 series, Xilinx Ultra Scale Plus. So if you want to get some cheap Bitcoin mining device when it's on sale and you want to play around with hardware acceleration, do Bitcoin mining, do stock trading, stock trading sounds interesting to me, um, do some machine learning, any other type of hardware acceleration of your computer, PCIe is accessible. It's not terrible. It's just poorly documented and requires a lot of uh, understanding of both the host device and the client device. I suggest Linux because it's the easiest to uh, just write a Python script that can read and write. And maybe next week we'll look at uh, writing a Python script that can do the DMA transactions. I'm gonna have to look at the, uh, at the uh, software for um, the Xilinx Windows driver and Linux driver and look at how they do the memory map and kind of copy those messages to see how I can uh, how I can read and write to those address buses. Which will be interesting to be able to have a quick Python script to do all this testing. Um, any questions? Is this interesting? Does anyone care about this information? Who want to try it on their own devices? Unfortunately, um, PCIe enabled um, FPGAs are not cheap. In all honesty, let's see. Where did that window go? This is the cheapest PCIe device you're going to find, I think. There are not many other options. If you look for PCIe enabled Xilinx device, under $100, this is a steal. And if you want to, uh, if you want a device with PCIe, you can stick this in your computer. Um, if you have a PCIe, you can also get a riser card. They have riser cards for them. If you need a riser card, you can probably just call, uh, send me a message. I got a few extra riser cards you can, I can send your way. Um, but if we go back, let me see. Yeah, we go back here, we can look at some riser card options. This is a, a two card riser with some PCIe um, extensions. You can also get like a generic PCIe riser or like something like that. I, I'm using uh, a P, it's called the Pico card riser. And 
yeah so looks like we finished configuration so let's go ahead and boot from the configuration memory so now let's uh let's go see if linux has updated so you'll notice um we'll notice that if we do this again um it still says one gig so we're going to have to go you know reboot now and hardware disconnected yeah 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 we're gonna have to wait for the computer to turn back on and be able to ssh into it and to see how our uh, motherboard has allocated allocated different memory for our device okay let's see if it's up and running again Sometimes it takes a while for the SSH host to back up, log in directly. Helps. Okay, we're logged in. There we go. So yeah, let's close this one. That sudo super user. So lspci v and now it's 32 megabytes and um, it's at a completely different address we're not using as much addressing so we should be able to use multiple devices on here so i think my goal is to make it more practical probably between 16k and 256k seems like a reasonable size um let me see if i'm kind of curious if um Summary. Trying to see if we can determine. So, like, like if we go to the Nvidia HDI controller. Yeah, I'm just trying to see if there's a is there's a size for the Nvidia that we can compare against. Size ID revision. Code header offset. I mean, we might be able to look at this and try to figure out the size, but big issue right now. Okay, so yeah, it needs to be more practical. So the um, so we're asking about rescanning when you change memory allocation. So your memory allocation is not an operating system level action; it is a motherboard level action. So yeah so how do you know how to issue a motherboard reset from um linux let's see mother motherboard reset from right this is what we're trying to achieve right a motherboard linux um so i mean you're still reset what <laughs> so yeah i the best i can tell is you need to do a proper uh there's no way to do a uh a rescan of where your memory address is different this is a this is a motherboard thing and from my understanding is it just you're just going to have to do a reset that's only if you change the address if you change the fpga design if you just reconfigure the fpga and kind of change the internal workings you can just do a, you can just remove it rescan and enable and that's fine but anytime you change your address space um you need to have the the motherboard do the power on um, memory allocation for P each pcie device and it's the same thing for windows it's it's a motherboard problem 
And if you do the motherboard on the Windows, you're going to have to uh, reconfigure it. Um, is this? Do you have any memory allocation here? The details. Do we have any bus number? PCIe base class, PCIe bus, got bar types. Oh, I know my address here, resources. Oh, look at this, memory range. Where there we have is the memory range of this one. Let's go look at the memory range of our uh, video processor, right? That does not look like much. Um. You can try to hot swap PCIe's. I heard people doing it. It is not supported well, if at all. Um, so, I get another device here. Uh, where is my display adapter right here? Um, properties. Woohoo, we can get two of them going. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I gotta say, it looks like, it looks like the, um, the GPU has quite a bit more address address spacing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But still not a gig worth, right? So this is this looks like it's um, still in the megabyte area. Um, that's still in the megabyte area. Still in the megabyte area. So nothing crazy. So definitely not a gig. Even when I have a giant GPU, it's not even using a gig of, gig of memory address space. Okay, I think that's probably all we're going to do today. Um, what's the schedule look like tomorrow? Right? Let's go. Let's go see what my schedule looks like. Actually, let's go to Twitter. What my specifically? Actually, we can schedule. Um. Go look at my schedule and see what we have planned, bro. So um, tomorrow we're going to be putting the pink on the ZCU 104. Um, so let me show you what that is. We have the ZCU 104, wrong screen. So the ZCU 104 is a Zinc Ultra Scale Plus device and hardware this is what it looks like and tomorrow we're going to be putting pink on it pink is python product for zinc this is a really cool way to test and develop hardware through through the pink platform so tomorrow we're going to take um this sd card image put it on an sd card and check it out so let's see, we have a link here. Why did it open an edge? I feel so offended. Um, so these are the resets I'm pretty sure I'm doing. So another interesting thing is, is how it's supported. So yeah, this is what we're writing to. This is how we, how I, how we can reset the, so this resets uh, the device, not the, uh, how do I say? Yeah, it this only affects a spe specific function of the device, not the whole device. So I can issue this reset pretty easily. So I can do the function reset. This is the PCI hot reset. Um, okay. Port removing. That, I do the remove. This is what I do and bridge control and rescan device. So the only thing I don't do is the bridge control right here. I'm not sure what function that does, but I do do the remove, I do do the rescan, and this will not change memory allocation. So 
if this if this is critical enough we could try that um yeah we could go ahead and try that real quick um so if we open this in a new tab open stupid why are you so stupid why can't you open a sh file did I go to my downloads? Can we go find that in my downloads and look at it like a normal human being? Whee! Uh, where did Edge download it? You know what? Forget this. We're going to open this up in the wonderful world of Google Chrome that eats all my memory. So let's go ahead and try this PCIe hot reset. I'm um, sure we can save it. Oh. Folder. Um, edit that. Yay! It's too close for comfort. So let's go ahead and try that, right? So we have our we have our interface right here. Let's go ahead and log in. Um, up a folder. We want to do let's make a directory, right? PCIe hot reset. And CD into that. We're gonna touch uh, a reset.sh and um let's nano this thing because i'm a nasty person okay paste okay and we'll exit Boom. okay we now have a device um so let's what should we try the hot reset um so what type of what what's this looking for? Um we're looking for a specific device here. Device specified. He does does he have an example run? Example run there. And if I can guess, so let's look at this. This is um go to system, we're gonna go bus, PCIE, right? And we want to go to devices. Um, so basically, what we're looking for is that right there. So what you want to do is we want to do the hot reset. I assume we're going to do sudo. PCIe. Uh, no. So I assume I need to make this executable. So c um, sudo cmod plus executable. Boom, right? Okay. That's why you have a password on a ch mod. Cool. Um, so let's do sudo pcie reset, and we want to do one, two, three, four, and we want to do two, which is going to be zero two zero zero dot dot zero, right? So we did it. We performed a hot reset, right? And we see it there at thirty two megs. So let's go ahead and uh, get our uh, bus again. And we're going to install the one gig design and see if we can do that. Um, what are we doing? We're doing um, hardware server. Yep, please. And have that bit file already organized here. So we're going to uh, program. Yeah, let's go ahead and program that guy. Yay, programming over network, so much fun. So now we're going to do a hot reset. And if that thing worked, we should have one gig. And you see right now what happened? There is no address, there's no memory. We, we have no memory for our device. And we can try doing it here, right? We can we can do a removal, remove, we can do a rescan, rescan, and we can do an enable. Boom. We can sprint it again, but we have no memory. There is no memory for this device. So that's that's why we have to do a full reboot when we change the memory allocation, and it's a motherboard issue that cannot be solved in good old Linux. 
Okay. Thank you for watching. I think that we got about yeah about an hour of recording. Um, I'll go put this on YouTube. I'll post the links for the uh, the repositories I reference, the Xilinx applications I reference, and maybe some links to the boards on eBay if anyone's interested. And yeah, if you have any questions, um, post a comment on the video, um, and we can figure out and work on that in the future. Okay. Um, thanks for watching. Have a great night. Bye.